Hey guys, Dave Duford here at Final Expense Agent Mentor at feagentmentor.com where I help agents like you succeed in selling all sorts of life insurance, not just final expense, although today's video is specifically about how to find the best final expense marketing organization uh, or otherwise the seven things that you should be aware of before you decide to contract with an organization. So the reason I'm putting this video together is because I've recruited agents since approximately 2013. Uh, I have recruited hundreds and hundreds of agents nationally across the U.S. And part of my recruitment process is education. There's a lot of marketing organizations out there that will sell you what I call blue sky and tell you how great it is to sell final expense, the money you make, the freedom you get. And while all this is true, they never tell you the downsides. They never talk to you about the contracts or the stipulations or the fine print. So the purpose of this video is to talk about the things that you should be aware of. And then also what you should look for if you feel like you're uh, in a situation where you're in, in the midst of this particular problem. So first point here is you should, I believe, in the final expense business, look for a brokerage. So a brokerage is defined as an organization that does not only work with one carrier, they work with a variety of carriers. If you're new to insurance, basically the way the uh, uh, selling process works is that an insurance agent contracts with an agency, and that agency has multiple contracts, in most cases, if they're brokerage, with multiple insurance carriers. You don't actually work for an insurance carrier in most circumstances. There are exceptions. We'll talk about that later. So the idea is you've got to work, find an agency that matches the description I just described. However, there are agencies that work with one company. And therein lies the problem. If you only work with one company, then what happens is you only got one option. And what if your client has certain health ailments that doesn't fit with that final expense option? Then you'll be relegated to selling an inferior product. And the biggest problem is, is that you don't know this going in because these guys won't tell you. But three or six months later, you get a guy like me, I represent 15 different companies. And if I can see I can improve upon my client's insurance needs, then they're going to drop your policy and you're going to have what's called a chargeback. Because let's face it, your product was inferior, mine's better. It's business, it's not personal. And that happens every single day in a final expense business. So it's important as an agent to carry your con or contract with carriers on a multiple multitude levels. You know, maybe have three to start with and then grow it out as you become more experienced. But with more access comes more options, which means better pricing and better value for your clients. Limited access restricts your availability to make sales and it puts you in a position of risk that someone like myself in a brokerage position is going to knock out your product and, and your client's going to take mine instead. So my recommendation, don't go to a brokerage or an agency or what we call a captive environment to where you're with one product because it's very likely that you're going to be at a serious uh, disadvantage when you get out there and sell. Number two, you want to make sure, and this is good, I've noticed there's been some positive changes over the past couple of years and, and I'll take some of the credit uh, of, of making awareness because the thing is a lot of people get involved in the insurance business because of a referral or somebody recommended them to consider it. And um, they, t they trust the person because they see they're some having some success, so they kind of just trust whatever they say. But a lot of these organizations, basically, um, what they do contractually to you is that if you leave the organization, usually within a year to two years, any sort of future commissions you would otherwise get become the property of the upline, the person that recruited you, or the agency that you're, you were a part of. And why is that a problem? Well, most likely if you get involved in final expense, you're going to have to go out and actually purchase leads. Uh, it, it's at your cost. You've got to manage that book of business. And then if you decide to leave, if you exit the business or you work for another organization you feel is better for your goals, and you have to give up that future commission, that's BS, right? I mean, you paid for those clients. You did the work to get them, and now they're saying that that income is theirs? Well, yeah. There's actually insurance contracts at, at agency-level carriers that stipulate that. And, and to me, it drives me nuts. I think it's, it's just legal theft. Um, so how do you get around that? Whenever you're talking to an insurance agency, I always ask, okay, what's the vesting clause in here? I want to make sure I'm 100% vested from the first day. I do this in my insurance agency. If you were to work with me, that's how I do business. I see no other way to do it. Um, to me, it's a cheap gimmick to try to make more at the agency level and screw someone else in the process. And if you get anybody that starts to squirm, 
that just sounds like they're not being transparent, trust your gut, please trust your gut, that's probably a bad sign. Find another agency, there's plenty of good insurance, final expense, marketing organizations to work with instead. Number three, kind of related to brokerage, is, is, is don't go captive if you can help it. Again, when we say captive, what that really means is that you sign an additional contract that you have to do business with this one agency. And, and the problem with that is that they essentially own you. I mean, look, the root word of captive is, is captivity, right? Or captive is a root word of captivity. And it means you're a slave. You're, you're, you're stuck with these people. And, and of course, the thing that's strange with, with insurance recruiting is, is recruiters put their best face on and make it out as if this organization is perfect. It's the best thing that's ever happened. It's a life changer. And while that may be true for some, you may find it's not good for you. And now you're stuck with them. Now you're stuck. You can't contract elsewhere. They've put you in non-solicitation agreements, uh, non-competition agreement type of things. Um, they may restrict your access to other carriers to better your own business because ultimately you are in business for yourself. But this contract says that you owe some sort of allegiance to these other companies. So if you can help it, stay independent. Independent is very similar to being a broker. You can say you're an independent entity. You recruit with whatever carriers you want. You determine how you want to run your business the way you want to run it. I think that's what is more superior, and that's how I get agents into my organization because they appreciate the benefits of independence. Number four is commission upside. So this is an important part. I think it's the least important out of all these, but it is important. You want to make sure you can maximize your take-home pay. A lot of organizations are not fully transparent on what's possible with uh, commissions for personal producers. And I commonly see people who are recruited at 60% contracts, 50% contracts. And when you account for the leads you have to develop and pay for, and you account for the chargebacks you may experience, you're not going to make a lot of money. And what you're doing instead is you're paying all these people above you in the upline a lot of money that they didn't necessarily do anything to earn. And I just don't like that arrangement. Uh, what's better is to join an organization that's leaner, that doesn't have a lot of management in between so that you can maximize your commission. And in final expense, usually 100% to 110% is a good place to start with the ultimate opportunity to go a little bit higher than that, proving that you've exchanged some kind of uh, proof of production. Maybe you've, you've gotten a little bit better than novice, your experience now. And then you can show that you can earn a little bit more. So, But that's where you want to be instead of the lower numbers because, look, let's face it, you need the margins on commissions to take care of your lead generation. If you're like most agents that succeed in this business, you're going to have to buy run leads, and that's no different from anything that we do here. Okay, so number five here is training. So this is, I think, pretty important. So training is the value-driven process of learning how to sell final expense. And while on the surface, final expense is a simple product with a simple marketplace to work. It's, it's non-technical. It's a one-call close. It's still very complicated. It takes time to really understand how to sell final expense, added learning the carriers, the underwriting, the sales process, the problems that flow from them, getting your leads situated, finding the right areas to work. And it helps to have somebody in your corner to help you answer a lot of these questions you'll invariably have. So there's organizations out there that will recruit you, but you'll never hear from them again. And they don't offer any sort of residual ongoing training, and they definitely don't offer support. I would stay away from those getting started. You may feel that you're entrepreneurial, you're independent, and that's totally fine, and, and I respect that. I'm the same way. But I can tell you, when I got in this business out of the personal training business, I didn't know a lick of, of life insurance, and I needed somebody to help me out. And eventually, I became self-sufficient, but in that first 6- to 12-month period, it was absolutely necessary. So find an organization, find a final expense IMO that's going to actually train you. It's going to take you on ride-alongs, at least make them available, and take your phone calls when you need help. Uh, number six here, no contracts. So I'm a big believer that whenever you do some sort of, of um, uh, relationship with an agency, that you do not sign anything uh, uh, above and beyond what the carrier contract is. Of course, you've got to sign that. But if you have to sign another agency contract, and especially if you're independent or you've got to pay for your own leads, there's probably bad news into that. I've seen contracts where uh, people have said, if you contract with another carrier outside of this organization, then you're giving up the next year's worth of your commissions. It's crazy. It's crazy. I've seen uh, contracts, like I said, that say your commissions becomes ours if you quit within the first year or if we fire you for any reason whatsoever. It's nuts. 
You know, and it's like, look, you're your own business person. That's how I look at final expense agent. You got to pay for your own leads. You got to determine your own schedule. You're in full control of your life. You should be in full control of your business life too. Now, granted, there may be some exceptions to the rules. Uh, you may have agency contracts that stipulate leads or, uh, you know, non-solicitation agreements. If there's some kind of subsidization with the leads, I can get some kind of compromises with the agency contract, but in general, like my agency, when I recruit a final expense agent, they're not going to sign an additional contract. They're just going to sign what's with the carrier. So that limits their additional requirements and gets them out of uh, the additional problems that could come along within their own business if I were to sneak some clause in that screwed them. I don't want to do that. And final point here is that the best thing you can do when you're looking for a final expense organization is find an organization that's willing to give you references. So uh, that's why I've spent a lot of time putting up uh, testimonial videos. Um, if an agent's interested in working with, with me and wants to speak with one of my agents, I make that available. Uh, you should be, there should be no problems asking for that. You shouldn't feel uh, like you're off-putting. Uh, again, proof is in the pudding, right? And uh, you should at least talk to these other agents to get a feel if, of how the organization really is. Because look, I'm a recruiter. I work in final expense. I'm putting my best hat on. But really what I am concerned with is how, do, how am I perceived based on the experience that my agents have. And I think if somebody has at least a marginal concern and wants to be completely comfortable with that, then there should be complete transparency in allowing you to talk to another agent that's already been working with me for a period of time. I'm not bothered by that. I'm thankful for it because I have somebody who's concerned about that and they appreciate a relationship and value. So if you get somebody you ask that and they get offended, they get pissed, they get angry, that's not worth your time. Don't worry about it. Move on. Find somebody else to do business with because it's likely that that's going to turn into a real big problem. Stay away from it. Hope you enjoyed this video about how to find the best final expense IMO. If you have any questions about joining my IMO, I can help you with that. I recruit primarily final expense agents, also mortgage protection, Medicare supplement sales as well. Uh, to reach me, go to my website. It's feagentmentor.com. Click the contact button. Send me a message. Uh, also, if you like this video, subscribe, thumbs it up, and leave a comment below if you have any questions. My name is Dave Duford. Y'all take care. Thanks.